Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. Over the last several episodes, we talked about the first two commandments, and now it's time for the third. Remember, Remember that, thou that thou keep, keep holy, holy the, the Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. Six, Six days, days shalt thou labor, labor, and shalt, and shalt do, do all, all thy works. works. But on the on seventh, seventh day, day is the Sabbath, Sabbath of the Lord thy God. God. Thou shalt thou do shalt no do work on it, on thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy beast, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. Exodus 20:8-10. This third commandment has to do with the Sabbath day and keeping it holy, and this requires knowing a little about the Sabbath. The ancient Jews honored the Sabbath day mainly because God had commanded them to. They didn't work on that day, didn't trade or do business, and didn't force others to work then. Furthermore, it was a special day for prayers and sacrifices, the Jewish customs that were used to remind the people of their proper relationship with God and of the prophecies of the Messiah. These prophecies had existed since the time of Moses, and although people didn't know much about him back then, there was always a sense that there was something very important that they were looking forward to. In modern times, we also are looking forward to something, but it's not the first coming of the Messiah, so it wouldn't be appropriate to use the same rituals that the ancient Jews used. Just as the Jews looked forward to the first coming of the Messiah on the Sabbath, which was Saturday, so we commemorate the saving work of Jesus on the day when he rose from the dead, Sunday. Because of our changed relationship to God, the Lord's Day, Sunday, replaces the original Sabbath in terms of the obligations that we have in this third commandment. Now, what are those obligations? Well, there are four main categories of obligations. The first is worship on the Lord's Day. The second is abstaining from work and profit. The third is how employment on the Lord's Day should be handled. The last is how the Lord's Day affects relaxation and enjoyment. This time, we'll talk mainly about the first, the obligation to worship God on the Lord's Day. A lot of people today seem to think that they can just worship God on the golf course on Sundays. There's a few big problems with thinking this way, however. First, that unless you're golfing for the benefit of some poor orphans or a hospital or some other moral charity, it's not worship. You're worshiping God if and only if you're doing good for the purpose of honoring goodness himself. This can be done in a variety of ways, but entertaining yourself with a sport isn't one of them. The second problem with thinking like this is that it denies, in a sense, the wisdom of God. God established a method of worship which will please him most, the holy sacrifice of the Eucharist. I haven't touched on the sacraments yet, but just to start with, the Eucharist is the perfect sacrifice, and the only sacrifice good enough to save us from sin. The third problem is that there's supposed to be another dimension to our Sunday worship than just being there for God, and it's found in the letter to the Hebrews. And let us consider one another, to provoke unto charity and to good works, not forsaking our assembly, as some are accustomed, but comforting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 24-25 In other words, our job is to assemble with other members of the church as a community, encourage each other to act charitably, and comfort each other in hard times. You can't do that on the golf course. Because of these three problems, we know that we can't just do whatever we want on Sundays, but have an obligation to worship God in the holy celebration of the Eucharist. However, keeping the Lord's Day holy is more than just that. That's why next time we'll discuss working on Sundays. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.